Cheers. What's up guys? My name is Bolanda Ruth Asakino, 19 years old and a second year college student studying Bachelor of Business, Technology and Livelihood Education, major in Information and Communications Technology at Polytechnic University of the Philippines. This is where I do my school activities. I use um, Grammarly to to check my grammars. I use Google to search, and I use Notion to take to take down notes whenever there's a lot of This is where I also online meet with my teachers and with my um, classmates, but. Not every time because um, my sisters are using are also using the desktop, so I always use my phone to online meet meet with my teachers. And also, it has a camera, and the desktop doesn't have a camera. This is actually where it's placed. Itong lamesa na to, itong computer na to, dito talaga sila nakalagay sa sulok. And ito yung totoong setup, magulo talaga siya. <laughs> Pero I always clean my place after I use it, okay? So, dito nakalagay yung mga modules ni Candice, tapos nilinis lang. Dito din, nag-aaral kapatid ko, and ako din, and then dito din, naglalaro ang aking nanay. <laughs> Homescapes pa more. I always wear a nice shirt for every online meet. I don't wear any sandals, but sometimes I do wear. Just tinatakpan ko na lang ng book ko para hindi halata. Pero I always wear um, t-shirts with sleeves and wear pajamas. I have listened to a TEDx talk by Jim Sevier titled Bridging the Digital Divide. He used the London Underground as an example to visualize the digital divide. The London Underground is a train transportation that people can travel from to and around central London. Let's talk about the three elements of the London Underground the train, the platform, and the gap between the train and the platform. Think of the train as the digital world. Then think of the platform as how we can access the digital world or the train. Now, there are two types of people in the platform. Those who can get in the train and those who can those people who can get in the train are the people who are technically skilled, are the people who has the knowledge and the economic ability to hop in the train, which means that the gap between the train and the platform is so little, so thin, that the people can easily access the train, the digital world. And then, there are also people who can't get inside the train, can't hop inside the train. And the people who can't get inside the train are the people who doesn't have the technical skills, the technical knowledge, and the economic ability to buy a device, a digital device or technology. So what happens is the gap between the platform of the people who can't get in the train and the gap between that and the gap between the train 
is very wide that they can't really hop on the train and will be left stuck on the platform. So, Jim Sevier stated that in 1995, William Canard, who was then the chairman of the FCC, he stated that in a world or in a society where we are increasingly defined by our access to technology, by our access to information, and that what we earn is what we learn, if you don't have the access to digital technology to information, then you will be left behind. Then you will be left in the digital darkness. And to address or to solve the problem of digital divide, Jem Sevier stated that we should create a shamanic interface. A shamanic interface is actually kind of like a shaman. You know, a shaman who has the ability to connect or access the good and evil spirits. A shamanic interface is kind of like that. It should be able to connect or bridge the gap between uh, the digital divide. To bridge the gap between the platform and the train so that no one's left behind and everyone can get in. So, a shamanic interface should be developed to a diversified accessible technology that is very helpful, very easy, and low cost. Examples of these technologies are the assistive technologies who help people um, work around their challenges. It's a very assistive, adaptive, and rehabilitative technology that, um, that helps people, especially to the people who have disabilities. And we'll talk about disabilities later on. Earlier, I told you guys that I will be talking about disabilities, and now we will talk about something about that. I have read a scholarly article about learning differences and digital equity in the classroom, and it addresses the evolving opportunities and challenges of digital equity in the classroom for students with learning differences. We all know that there is no average or typical student, and that we all have different learning styles. And the emergence of technologies in our classroom, in our education, in our lives, um, it gained an effective use of digital technology that increased students' engagement and helped teachers improve their lesson plans and facilitate personalized learning. And it also helped students build essential skills for the 21st century. But like what I have said earlier, not everyone or not every student or not every teacher can adapt to a digital world. That all students face barriers and challenges to learning and to technology. Calling this as a disability. So it was stated in the article that disability is not only about physical disability, but it's also about um, in a subjective point of view, it's about a mismatch between the person and the environment, or the person and the product, or the person and the service. In the realm of education, it's a mismatch between the learner and the learning experience offered. So, this implies that everyone and anyone can experience disability if presented with a design that doesn't match their needs. For students with learning differences, digital systems and computer-aided learning provide as an opportunity and a risk. An opportunity and a risk because there are students who can adapt to technology, to computer-aided learning, and there are students who cannot. So if technology is designed correctly, then we can help those students who can adapt. We can help them to slowly and progressively adapt to technology or to computer-aided learning and it will also help um, unlock previously inaccessible learning experiences and it will also overcome barriers and challenges in the education system. However, if technology 
is not designed correctly, then there will be a huge problem. There will be a huge problem about inclusivity. There will be a huge problem, another digital divide, there's no uh, digital equity, there will be inequity, and it will be a huge problem in the education system. Now, what does it have to do about my course? Or what does it have to do about me? Because like, I'm just a student. I'm just a regular nobody who just makes videos and just sitting and chatting here doing nothing and just existing. <laughs> no, it has something to do about you. It has something to do about me. And it has something to do about every one of us, you know? Because we should be the catalysts of change. We should work hand in hand. We should help everyone. We should unite to have a better and great future for us and for the future generations. To have a digitally diversified future and a future of digital equity so that as students, teachers, workers, everyone, everyone should be a catalyst of change. To our dearest Sir Dio, <laughs> thank you for being our teacher. Um, we, the BBTLED ICT Tutu, we've been wanting to be your teacher since first year pa kami or ako lang ba nun, or I, I think lahat naman kami we've been wanting to be your teacher because you have a very friendly vibe you know sobrang bait yung po sir and, and you're a man after God's own heart you're a very biblical person and that's just so amazing it's just so majestic and wonderful to to bask in God's love and to also be a teacher who empathizes with their students and who cherishes their students or maybe not just students but you also cherish um, your job, your loved ones and just everyone. I think you're a very intimate person that's why you always cherish us students and empathize with us. I, I don't know I just I just feel like that, like that. To my dearest classmates <laughs> to my dearest BBTLED ICT Tutu. Hi. Mahal na mahal ko kayo. <laughs> Thank you for everything. And also, forgive me. Uh, Thank you for everything because um, thank you for um, existing. Thank you for being my classmates. Thank you for the fun memories na kahit pinapanood ko lang kayo. I, I, you're just... You guys are just so fun to be with. Um, thank you for the laughter. Thank you for the experiences, and especially sa mga katroba ko si si Karen, si Joy, si Chloe, si Joey, and si Shai. Thank you for the fun experiences that I have with you guys. And forgive me, cause hindi ko pa kayo na add friends sa Facebook. Okay, add friends ko kayo. Okay, sorry na. Sorry na. Sorry na, okay? <laughs> Forgive me though. But still, thank you. And I'll cherish uh, the relationship that we had. To our dearest future students of DBTLED ICT, it took me a long process to finally accept my course finally accept myself um, i'm hoping praying and wishing you a better life a better future uh, great classmates with great teachers i'm hoping and praying and wishing you all the time love you